This week's webinar is brought to you by PremiumBeat.com, providing high-quality stock music for all of your video and film projects. We're back with Jeff Rock. Jeff is an art director and a set designer, and we're looking at the whole process of production design as it applies to both film and theater. Jeff, one of the things that we've looked at is the designing of entire sets, but sometimes there's elements within a set that have to be designed. It's not just building a wall, is it? Right. I mean, there's uh, every aspect of, just like in film, or where you're doing theater or film, I mean, every aspect of it, every, anything visually that you see is being designed or or chosen in terms of like furniture and, and that type of thing. So, um, yeah, every, everything is art directed, or should be. Well, let's take a look at another example. This is something which is in construction. Tell us about this. This is for a, uh, a show called Victor, based on uh, the Frankenstein myth mythos. This is after the, the novel ends, and they go to a, an island. And uh, so in this particular uh, piece, I had to create a, a, a cliff face uh, and also a cottage that is on the island. And so the idea is when you look at something, you want it to have a unity to it as one piece, but then with lighting and stuff, you shift from location to location. So uh, this is under construction. This was uh, the rock area was built uh, with uh, um, platforms at, at weird angles because the actors have to actually climb on this thing, so it has to, has to be safe and uh, solid, and then uh, chicken wire uh, over that, uh, and then covered with uh, a, a paper and then uh, you uh, use uh, foam, a spray foam, to cover that to give it the, the, the rock look, and then you scenic it. Uh, you can no, see. Wait, wait, what's yeah. scenic mean? Scenicing is uh, anything that's uh, taking it from uh, um, just a rough uh, finish to uh, a painted uh, finish. So uh, you can make you know rocks look like real stone. Um, just uh, aging something down, uh, uh, if you want to, you know, create the feeling that it's been around a long time. Well, let's take a look at the finished result. So there you go. There's, there it is finished. You can see uh, how much uh, more realistic it looks. We're still dealing with a theatrical aspect of it, so I wanted to, uh, you know, still give it a color palette of its own, and you can see the the, the differences in, between the uh, interior uh, cottage setting and the and the and the uh, stone. But also, you can see in this uh, picture is how the uh, the cliff face, the uh, I call it the fried rock uh, area at the top, is over the top of the uh, the cottage. So you really tie the two together, and then you can see the point of the cottage uh, when that goes to silhouette. It actually becomes a rock itself. Um, so in that way, you uh, create this unity of the set, uh, and yet you have two different, uh, two, two different images there. Well, thinking of stones, let's take a look at the next image. What's so this that? is from a show called Seascape that was done at Theater West, and uh, this is on a beach uh, area. So the, uh, the ground area that you're seeing is actually uh, a beige carpet that I laid down and cut in this way, and it worked perfectly for, uh, for sand and it was much uh, cleaner and uh, much less messy <laughs> than sand would have been. Uh, but all of those rocks uh, are, are, I made. Uh, they, uh, some of them are, are climbed on, some of them are not. So uh, you have to create uh, uh, areas that are solid, uh, and then uh, it's made out of a combination of foam, uh, uh, chicken wire, and, uh, uh, and, and wood. And a lot of paint to make them look <laughs> to make them look realistic. So. How big are they? Um, you know, uh, most of them were about uh, five feet long. Uh, you know, combination five to eight feet, I guess. Uh, kind of scattered around. I wanted that feeling that they were. Um, you know, this is like at the, the berm at the top of uh, of of the beach. So on the other side of those rocks, it goes down to the ocean, and so you have the panorama. Uh, sky in the background, which uh, would changed with the projections and lighting to uh, create different different moods and feelings. One of the other things you are is you've been a sculptor and a model maker for a variety of films. What were right. some of the films you worked on from a model making point of view? Uh, I worked for DreamQuest for a number of years, and so I worked on Armageddon, uh, working on the asteroid itself. Uh, there was a lot of the asteroid work that was done digitally, but it 
they usually bitmapped the sculptures that we did first, but we did large scale uh, asteroid uh, uh, sculptures also, and also uh, uh, just flat landscapes where the shuttlecraft flew through. Those were all miniatures. Uh, that were that were uh, sculpted and painted and, and created. Now, were the gargoyles part of Armageddon? Yes, uh, this is one of those cases where um, they they decided to add a shot. Uh, Deep Impact had just come out, and there was that famous shot of the of, of uh, a tsunami wave wiping out New York, and so they had to best them. And they said, "We have to come up with our own, you know, tsunami wave." And so uh, the idea was to create this. Uh, um, the, it was a destruction of Paris scene. Let's go take a look at a gargoyle. What do we got here? Yeah, so this, uh, so what we did is we created uh, uh, a section of the Notre Dame Cathedral with the gargoyles. Uh, and so the gargoyles goes basically see the impact uh, of an asteroid uh, uh, hitting uh, uh, Paris and the, bl the blast coming towards uh, the Notre Dame Cathedral. And these gargoyles are uh, kind of uh, looking out uh, aghast as this uh, as this blast approaches. Uh, Let's take a look at the next step. So I did not sculpt uh, the gargoyles, uh, but I did uh, scenic them and and made them look like stone. Uh, uh, I did work on the uh, uh, Notre Dame wall and did sculpt uh, aspects of that and and scenic that. Uh, and you can see the distressing and the age and and uh, creating that feel that it's it, it is really stone and uh, it's all made out of foam. There it is on uh, on stage, uh, being shot. Uh, I think this was a uh, a uh, pull in or a, a, a pass by the the face of the uh, the gargoyle. Uh, it was a very tight shot. I was very proud of it because it was uh, just inches away from the uh, gargoyle, and you can't tell that it's not made of stone. How did they blow it up? They used uh, air pressure, air guns. So we would actually be shaking the set, uh, pushing in. These air guns would go off, blow them off. There was a green screen behind that they could add the uh, the, the images of uh, birds and different things going on. Uh, and then uh, we would uh, grab the pieces back together, <laughs> glue them back together, and they'd look even better the second time we shot them and put them in place. And we'd go for you know take after take. And glue them back together each time. Yep, we just glue them back together with foam. <laughs> <laughs> and the cracks actually made them look even more realistic. So, <laughs> yeah. When you're designing pieces for a set, what's the thought that you're keeping in mind? I mean, uh, overall is the storytelling aspect of it. How does it best serve the, the story uh, in that particular uh, instance, uh, in that scene, uh, for those characters? That's my overall goal. Um, it, it all comes down to that. So, I mean, that's in a nutshell, that's basically what I'm looking at. You've been doing this for more than five years. I'm not going to have you guess how long, but you've been doing this for a while. What is it that still interests you about it? You know, I love uh, the idea of creating worlds and bringing people into those worlds uh, so they, 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 they forget that, they, uh, that they're not in a, a real setting or, or whatever the world is, that they get drawn into that. You know, it takes them out of their normal, everyday thing. So. Um, you know, it's just that illusion. I love, I love illusion. I have a magic background, and so it kind of uh, helps me get that out of my system of you know creating these worlds for people to enter into, and, and actors to enter into also. If a director is working with you for the first time, first time they work with a production design team, what piece of advice would you give them that would make your job easy? Um, come in with uh, you know as strong a vision as possible for for what you want, concepts, ideas uh, of of what you're looking at, um, uh, feelings, uh, tone, um, that type of thing is is really important. I mean even if, even if you don't have a really great visual sense, you know if you if you know the tone of something, uh, what you're striving for, those kind of uh, things help any designer to uh, help you, you know, create what you're going for. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at production design, art direction, and set design. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 169. By the way, if you need to stretch your training dollars, a membership to our video training library saves you money and time.
You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.